Howdy friends, welcome back to another episode of Truck Talk, brought to you by me, inspired by Chili. I don't know where the freaking crap my sunglasses are, man. I've been looking for them, I'll find them, but I figured our uh, female viewers anyways would like to look at me right in my beautiful brown eyes as I tell you guys a little story today on Truck Talk. You know, a lot of y'all might know might not know this about me, but uh, I am quite the hunter. I enjoy hunting. I've been hunting since I was uh, a wee lad. And um, while I was active duty in the Navy, I lived outside of this, the city, Virginia Beach. I lived in a small town called Suffolk, Virginia. And uh, right on the edge of a, a big piece of public land called the Great Dismal Swamp. And we used to hunt all around the swamp but we were in some clubs there and around the great dismal swamp there is a very very healthy population of black bear big black bear i'm talking about monsters uh there were certain times a year that you couldn't walk through the woods without bumping into four or five of them i mean there were a lot of them and so i was sitting up in my deer stand one evening uh i was bow hunting and I was actually hunting a nice buck that had been working a, a wood line along the edge of a clear cut, kind of a hedgerow. And I'm sitting up there with my bow, hoping this big buck walks in. And I hear something crunch the leaves behind me. And I look back and it's about a 500 pound black bear all by himself, big boar. And he's a trophy man. He's got a head on him the size of a daggone steering wheel in this FJ60 Land Cruiser. And uh, I wasn't looking to shoot a bear, but I thought, dang, that's a trophy bear, and I had a bear tag. So I turn around, draw my bow back, and uh, I shoot this bear, right? Knock him down with the first shot. I don't know how it happened. Hit some bone or something, knocked him down. Uh, I shoot him again, and uh, he kind of crawls off into this tall grass that's behind me. Well, he gets off in that tall grass, and I kind of hear him thrash, thrashing around, and I hear him kind of moan, and you, most of you guys, if you bear hunt, you know a, a bear lets off like a death moan when he dies. <clears throat> so I assume this bear's dead. Well, he's 500 pounds. <clears throat> so I call all my buddies up, and I say, uh, I say, hey, I got a big bear on the ground up here. I can't see him. He's off in that tall grass. Y'all, Can y'all come up here and help me because I can't move this thing by myself? So everybody comes up there to where I'm at, five or six people, including my wife, Brooke, and uh, one of my good neighbors, uh, his name was Reggie. And uh, Reggie was a legend around that, that area. And uh, I, said, I said, now, let me tell you something else about Reggie. Reggie was an alcoholic, so around about evening time, Reggie was drunk. I was hunting in the evening. Reggie comes up there anyways, well, he's, you know, drunk like he normally is, is what it is. He's still a legend, even though he's drunk. I said, Reggie, you reckon that bear's dead? Reggie said, oh, yeah, that bear's dead. Because I, I was thinking about going in there with a shotgun in case it wasn't dead. He said, oh, yeah, that bear's dead, man. Don't worry about that. So me and all my buddies and my wife, we go to hauling off in this tall grass, tracking some little spots of blood, right? And this grass is so thick and tall, it's above our heads and it's super thick and we're just parting the grass. And as we part the grass, we can see, you know, another four feet or so in front of us. Well, we're tracking this blood and finally, I part the grass and there's that 500 pound black bear sitting there looking at me, live, as, live and well, all right? So he gets up and commences to chasing us. Well, I do what I normally do, especially like when I get in a yellow jacket nest or something. I run, all right? I don't have time to, to give directions. I run. If you ever see me running, you better run too, all right? I'm going to go ahead and tell you. So I take off, and this bear is chasing us through this grass. Well, we all end up getting away from the bear, finally. And um, get back out there, and I say, Reggie, you got to give me that shotgun, man. Now we have to go back in on this bear. We know he's alive. We know he's wounded. This time we got a shotgun, but we know this joker's mad. So we track back in there on him. We pick up the spot where he was laying the last time. We continue to track him from that point. Finally, we part the grass. There he is again. 
and I take a shot right behind the front shoulder and put this bear down, good clean kill on that shotgun shot, and um, then the work begins. Now, my wife has always gave me crap about that. Uh, what, what, you, you weren't going to save me from the bear? I can't save you from a 500 pound freaking bear, man. All right. What's the lesson from this story? Look, first of all, don't, don't, don't take, um, don't take advice from someone who's been hitting that bottle, son, even if they're a legend. If they tell you something, take it with a grain of salt. Uh, second advice, second lesson from this, it's good to be in shape, man, because if something gets after you, all you gotta be able to do is outrun the slowest person in the group and you're gonna be good to go. Third lesson from this, don't ever go anywhere unarmed. Because, uh, yeah, that's a bad feeling when you got something a lot bigger and stronger than you chasing you and you ain't got no way, you ain't got nothing, to, you ain't got no way to do nothing about it. That was a pretty adventurous hunt. I love you guys. If you enjoyed the story, buy a hat, buy a t-shirt. Trying to keep Chili in the business, man. Y'all know the deal. He's in the dungeon packing right now. <laughs> about all he's good for. Anyhow, I love you guys. Catch you next time. Enough said.